President Biden's aides think his real problem is that he does too much. His approval rating right now is around freezing. And aside from the economy, most people who are polled think he's too old. In fact, he now has a lower approval rating than his number two. Alex Thompson at Axios reports current and former Biden aides say he often pushes to do more travel and events than they think he should. Biden pushing up against his limits sometimes creates a cycle in which he wears himself out and then appears fatigued during public events. The White House's problem isn't that Biden appears to be worn out. It's that there's nothing left, and this is just to be fair, there's nothing left to do about it. Putting nap time on the official White House schedule won't help things. Among the changes the White House has already made for President Biden, he uses the mini stairs on Air Force One to avoid a fall. His events are mostly from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. every day. He rarely does more than one or, at times, two events a day. If you look closely, he wears sneakers rather than standard dress shoes. We're told that's because they want to avoid any chance of him falling. He skipped a public birthday celebration. George Will, News Nation senior contributor, is with us. George, it is good to see you. Sorry it's not in person, but uh, good to have you here uh, anyway. Is seeing less of President Biden an answer? No, because hiding him makes him, and this is a paradox, the more he's hidden, the more conspicuous the issue becomes. The fact is, Leland, that his polls are terrible and they are actually worse than they seem. Let me give you two examples. In order to win the Electoral College, a Democrat has to win the popular vote by 2 to 4 percent because the Democrats have lots of wasted votes in the sense that they carry California by 5 million votes, but that doesn't get them any more electoral votes than if they carried it by one vote. The same is true in New York and Illinois. Second, if Mr. Biden carries the African-American vote by, say, 70 percent, people say, gee, that's a landslide. If he carries the African-American vote by 70 percent, he loses because he is, and most Democrats recently have been accustomed to, carrying the African-American vote by something in the 90s. Yeah. So his position is really perilous at this point. And you think about where the African-American vote is key. It's going to be Michigan, Pennsylvania, Georgia, North Carolina. These are, these are the major, major swing states. The other thing that President Biden has been reported to try and do, and we've seen this publicly, right? He doesn't do a lot of press conferences. Uh, last solo press conference, November 15th. Last one before that was September 15th. But he has now started to make his own jokes about the age issue. Take a listen. I just want you to know it's difficult turning 60. This is the 76th anniversary of this event. And I want you to know I wasn't there in the first one. <laughs> I was too young to make it up. <laughs> All right. You compare those to what Ronald Reagan did uh, in the 1984 debate, his joke about his age. Take a listen. I will not make age an issue of this campaign. I am not going to exploit for political purposes my opponent's youth and inexperience. <laughs> Similar jokes. Uh, why is it that it worked for Ronald Reagan, did not work, and does not work for Joe Biden? First of all, Ronald Reagan was 10 years younger, approximately, than Joe Biden is. Second, Ronald Reagan exuded a kind of vigor and vigorous campaigning that Mr. Biden is going to obviously avoid. Uh, furthermore, the American people have made up their mind about Biden. Look, Leland, if you're running for president and they don't like your policies, change your policies. If they don't like your ads, change your ads. If they don't like your age, what are you going to do? The fact is he cannot disguise the fact that he is one stumble, one stumble walking across the manicured White House lawn, one stumble from being out of this campaign. Hmm. That's a very perilous position. Yeah, the world's I, oldest political party. I, I think about the reporting from Axios, Alex Thompson, saying that Jill Biden, uh, the first lady, is intimately involved in his scheduling, intimately involved in all of these discussions. Her staff is um, as well. I know you were a big Woodrow Wilson fan, but it, the, the tail end of the Wilson administration, it was his wife who was effectively running things. And I'm wondering if the White House doesn't worry, right, that the less President Biden is seen, 
the more those questions uh, following up on Alex's reporting are going to start getting asked about really how in charge he is, how much of this is a Biden presidency versus a figurehead with a, a prime minister uh, behind him. That's one problem, but the, there's an opposite nature of that problem, and it is this. Joe Biden says, I'll just get out there and show people how vigorous I am. Ron DeSantis said, wait till I get out and start campaigning after the Florida legislature goes out. He came out, people looked at him, and they didn't like it, and he began to go straight down in the polls. It's quite possible that the more Biden is exposed to the public, the more the public's preconceptions will become firm conceptions. Huh. As, as we said, uh, the problem isn't his age. The problem is there's not much, much left to do about it. George, um, it is good to see you. Uh, we're getting all of our smartest minds, you being at the top of that list, on the following question. Um, yes or no, November of 2024, will Trump be the Republican nominee and Joe Biden be the Democratic nominee? To the latter, definitely no. I think Mr. Biden will not be nominated. And uh, I'm, if I, 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 I'd bet 51 49 against Trump at this point. Thanks for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.